So Mr. Romano, you um, delivered quite a bit of a burn burner speech in terms of support of, of CHCs. One of the things I wanted to, to talk to you about was one of the last things you mentioned was this notion of a third revolution. And I'm really interested in, in that. So could you sort of frame that up a bit more? Um, how you view what's coming, what needs to happen in terms of CHCs, in terms of the next revolution in healthcare? Well, I think the next revolution, what I'm trying to say about that is a switch in attitude, uh, which I think we've had for a number of years, and it's an important concern uh, that our efforts should be spent with respect to our acute care. Our, when we fall ill, we have not traditionally thought about all of the things which can contribute to our illness, quality of life, and this is, I think, the important new dimension of the debate. Um, it is a third revolution because we have to uh, pick up on this sense that how we live and the communities we live, what we relate to, our working uh, uh, friends, our time constraints, all of these factors have a big impact on our lives, our quality of lives and living. And I think this is a third revolution. I think it's important as controlling communicable diseases. And uh, it uh, balances off the acute care, which is for too long dominated, as important as it is, the health care policy debates. So it's the third revolution is also the second stage, or hopefully the second stage of what Tommy Douglas hoped for yeah. in terms of, of medical care, medical aid in, yeah. in Canada. Why is this taking so long? Well, I can only answer from my own personal practical experience as Premier in the province of Saskatchewan, Tommy Douglas's province. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is, I think that the, the culture places so much emphasis on the fancy technologies. Uh, when I say fancy, I don't mean to diminish it. The new uh, discoveries with respect to medications, uh, the tremendously heroic efforts of surgery. Uh, this is where we get the publicity all the time. And in society, there is kind of a belief, I'm overstating it, generally, I'm not saying for everybody, that we can pretty well do anything we want to ourselves and the communities exist the way they are. Somebody will be able to repair us, much like a mechanic would mm -hmm. repair a broken down car. That's what is, is the psychology. And that's been the barrier to communicating it. It's the perception that exists in the public. Namely, that uh, you can do anything you want to yourself, you can live in any environment you want, if you get access to the doctor, there's a fix in place. I'm not saying the doctors believe that, I think society believes that. Right. So one of the other things you called for in your talk was a really pressing need for a national community health care strategy. Right. Given that the Harper government is now in a majority, um, how optimistic are you that that's actually going to take place in the next few years? Well, I'm, uh, I'm uh, hopeful, I'll put it that way. I think a lot depends on the values system which guide the, the Prime Minister. Uh, the fact that he is going to replenish the funding on the acute care side of health care for the 6% a year, the, going all the way back to the 2004 Accord, is probably a good thing, probably. The caveat that I would attach is if the money is going to be extended again, renewed and extended, this time round, unlike in 2004, Ottawa should be trying to attach conditions to that money being transferred to the provinces, one of which should be the need to organize in individual jurisdictions, working with individual communities, the concept of determinants, determinants upstream healthcare, community health, centers, because as I say, they're the opposite ends of the same coin. Illness and the community health determinants and CHC work together. That's the reality of it. Now, does Mr. Harper have that philosophy or approach? I do not know. Um, but all I can say is we'll see what his actions and his words amount to. I would say to him that if you're going to be pumping this money into the healthcare system, Make sure that a lot of it is directed to where the benefits have proven to be much more uh, valuable, and that is to the upstream determinants of health concept, CHCs as a vehicle. I just want to end with one final question. It's a question I asked the Lieutenant Governor last year. You're clearly passionate about this issue personally. Why? Well, I'm affected by 
two or three factors. First of all, uh, I'm the son of Ukrainian immigrant parents. My mother and father uh, were born in the old country in Ukraine. I was born here. And uh, I don't want to overstate this, but it was a, we were poor. Her father worked uh, all of his life on the railway as a section man. He encouraged me to get to university in education. Uh, but in those days, they didn't have Medicare. And I understood exactly uh, the challenges that faced them and thousands like them. So when Douglas obviously inspired me from Saskatchewan, wanted to get the first phase, the barrier between acute care, between those who need it and those who give it, attenuated, if not reduced, that was a great idea. By that time, I was convinced philosophically, as a young student, ideologically in my own mind, reason prevailed that the next message, which Douglas was also communicating at the same time, was just as important, namely complementing it with CHCs, community health clinics, and the like. So I was a product of the circumstances. In Saskatchewan, there was no room for middle ground. You couldn't sort of say, yeah, this is good, and but a little bit of this bad, or I'll consider, you had to choose in that debate. And I chose, based on my values, my experiences, based on the influence of this great individual, Douglas, that humanity and mankind in this province, and generally, if we could adopt this model, would be improved by doing so. Those were the, fa the factors which convinced me to, to get into the, that policy point of view. And I feel more strongly about it today than I did when I made the decision to join. I think it's needed more today than I did then. Perhaps I didn't understand it fully then, but it sure is needed now. And there is an emerging movement. It just needs a little more focus and more profile and more determined leadership by people who I know are working very hard in the community and doing good things in the community, but to take it one notch up, and that is to bring it to the attention of the policymakers, the premiers, the prime minister, healthcare people, and the like. Great. Thank you for that. Thank you. Okay.